Hi folks, it's Switchback. All cell phones can call 911 if there is any cell signal anywhere, but you may have heard that the new iPhone 14 is offering a satellite SOS option. Let's discuss. Currently, it only supports English, Spanish, and French, and it's only gonna be available on phones that are sold in the United States and Canada. When you activate it, in ideal conditions, it will send a signal in 15 seconds. Most conditions are less than ideal, so anything where there are clouds, mountains, hills, trees, if there's rain, any kind of walls like canyons or, again, mountains, it can take up to 15 minutes for a signal to go. When you activate it, it will tell you which way to point your phone and just hold it naturally but you'll need to hold it in that direction until that signal goes. And again, that can be up to 15 minutes. From there, follow the directions on the screen. You will be prompted to select preset different questions um, with preset answers. You can also text 911 or SOS from the messages app. Once you do that, select emergency services and then report emergency. If you have your health data and emergency contacts in your phone, that information will be sent out. So make sure that you have that up to date. This will connect to the Global Star Satellite Network, which is not quite as widespread as Iridium. The message will go from your phone to the satellite to a relay center that's owned by Apple and they will then dispatch out to whatever the appropriate service is. Again, you will be able to communicate with them to a point. They will ask you questions and you can select preset answers. Your messages are encrypted, but the um, receiving entity, whoever the emergency response folks are, may hold on to that data for their own purposes. You can also share your location with the Find My app. Again, this is a first generation item, so I'm sure that there will be some glitches, and right now it's in limited release only in the United States and Canada. It is not likely to work above 62 degrees latitude, so if you're in Northern Canada or Alaska, that is definitely a consideration. The service is free for the first two years, but there is no word on what happens after those two years whether you're required to pay a fee, whether it's an optional fee, or even if that technology will be obsolete at that stage. A few things to consider. Satellite communication will drain your battery on your cell phone fast. Just like tracking your hike, your run, what have you with the GPS, it's, you know, satellites are portable versus cell towers, which are stationary. They use more bandwidth and there are lots of dropouts because they are in motion. As a result, if you've ever used an actual sat phone, which few of us have, but you'll notice that sometimes the audio is inaudible because the satellites, again, are in motion. Right now, this is, again, text only, and because it does drain your battery faster, it's a good idea to carry a power bank, and you may already be someone that carries a power bank with you like I do, but again, if your battery is going faster because you've hit that SOS button and it's pinging to search and rescue and you're communicating back and forth, you're draining your battery really fast. And most of us look at how long we're gonna be out and we're choosing what power bank to take. And so you may go through what you have in your power bank faster than planned as well. And if you're in that situation, you might end up being out longer than planned. When search and rescue is initiated, it is an hours or days long endeavor. It's certainly not instant. So with that in mind, unless they have advised you otherwise, or if there's a safety risk, stay in one place. An iPhone also is not gonna be as rugged as a satellite communicator. And I couldn't find any information about whether or not this can be used in airplane mode. So hopefully more information will come soon. Again, this is first gen technology, so there are probably gonna be a lot of kinks that get worked out over the first several months, even years. So don't ditch your satellite communicator yet. I will certainly still be carrying mine. Who really is best served with this? It could be anytime you're out on a road trip and you might be out of cell service for parts of that, or people who are rarely out on the trail or rarely out of cell signal. But if you're an avid backpacker, trail runner, hiker, 
or even someone who, you know, overlanding or anything like that, I would not rely on this technology. Ultimately, it's a nice band-aid. A satellite communicator is also a lot more versatile when you're away from cell signal, so I can still get weather reports on this. I can communicate something that may not be something that I would hit SOS for on this. I can communicate that with loved ones back home, but if I didn't have this, then I might have to hit the SOS button. Now, if I did have to hit the SOS button on this, I still have a lot more flexibility than I would on the cell phone. I would be able to send free text messages even on a mini like this. And this is on the Iridium network, which is again, more reliable than the Global Star. Now, if you wanna know exactly what happens when you press that SOS button, then you can click on this video right up here where I go into all the details of that. I'll be watching to see what happens with this technology, but I hope you got some value. And if you did, be sure to like and subscribe and I will look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Battery on your cell.